All right, so we are gonna be taking a look at every single ingredient I own. I recently moved my lab into a new room, so I just did a huge clean out and organized everything really well. Also, I didn't I realize while making this how many ingredients I had, so I'm not able to talk about these in depth. I'm just gonna say the name of the ingredient and maybe like one or two words to describe it. If you wanna see a more detailed video over my ingredients, let me know and I'll do it by categories. But we're mainly gonna be focusing on these two shelves and this is the first shelf we are gonna be taking a look at and we are gonna be going uh, like section by section. So here's the first section we're looking at and we are going to take a look at all of my emulsifiers. I got Rita Mulse SCG, also known as Eco Mulse. Love this stuff, go to emulsifier for me. It's Eco Sir as well. Lotion Pro 165, it emulsifies but without thickening. So it's great for products that you don't wanna be thick but you need emulsify oil. Heliosoft, not a big fan of it yet, but I've only used it a few times, so maybe I'm using it wrong. I need to use it a little bit more to really say for sure. It is EcoCert. Montano 68 MB, EcoCert, love the stuff, love using it with like active ingredients. 11 1000, it is EcoCert, not the biggest fan of it, but there are people out there who like it. Satira 20, this is not EcoCert. I don't really use it too often, so I don't really have much to say. Emulsifying Wax NF, not EcoCert, Used to be my go-to emulsifier. It's great, but don't use it too often anymore. Cold process emulsifiers are next. Gel Maker Nat, probably my favorite one. Cream Maker ANIO, I don't know, I haven't used it enough. ICE Hair Gel, haven't used it yet. ICE Conditioner, I don't remember anything about it. ICE Sunflower, not the biggest fan. ICE Hair Restore, made my hair greasy. Moving on to cationic emulsifiers. Cream Maker Cat, love it. Verisoft EQ65, hard to formulate with, but I like it. DTMS50, go-to cationic emulsifier. Stabilizers and thickeners. Behenol alcohol, works great. Steric acid, love it. Glycerol stearate, don't find myself using it too often, but I do like it. Cetyl alcohol, go-to fatty alcohol. All wax LC, comes in handy a lot, I like it. Now moving down to the next shelf, we're gonna focus on extracts. I'm just gonna say like one word or maybe nothing about each one. Henna extract, acne. Witch hazel extract, I don't know. Calendula extract, soothing. Oat extract, soothing. Chamomile, soothing. Cucumber, soothing. Green tea extract, antioxidant. Ginger, anti-aging. Oat and aloe, soothing. Everything's soothing. Watermelon, anti-aging. Caffeine extract, viola tricolor extract. Turmeric extract, ginseng extract. Papaya enzyme, marshmallow extract, apple cider vinegar extract, strawberry extract, banana extract, oil soluble, and Ecuadorian rose extract, which is oil soluble. Now moving on to conditioning ingredients and hair care ingredients. This one you can add in a shampoo to add a conditioning effect. Um, Baoba protein, honey quads, and rice protein are all conditioning. This is good for frizzy hair. This helps volumize your hair, helps uh, hair growth. This is good for bleach damaged hair. This is just plant-based keratin. I don't remember what this does, but it's good for your hair and scalp. Now moving on to actives and vitamins. The short name for this is P-peptide. It's a peptide. This is also a peptide. D-L-panthenol. Uh, this is like a pack of a bunch of vitamins. Vitamin C liposome. This is good for stretch marks. This is good for cellulite, I'm pretty sure, and stretch marks. Caffeine liposome. Vegetable version of collagen. This is a brightener. Another brightener. Another brightener. And another brightener. Oh, and this is also a brightener, I'm pretty sure. Haven't used it yet. Oh, this is also a brightener. That's good for acne. Now moving down to the next shelf. These are all of my cleansing surfactants. And um, yes, this ingredient here is expired and so is this one, but they still seem to work fine, so I'm gonna still use them on myself. My overall favorite surfactant. Haven't used this in a while. Uh, this is my favorite liquid surfactant. This is my favorite amphoteric surfactant. And then this is a blend of a bunch of surfactants. I haven't used it in a while. This is cocoa butane, but sold under a different name. I don't even remember where I got it. All right, now moving down to this next shelf. This is where I keep all of my like overflow coloring, essential oils, fragrance oils, and flavor oils. And what I mean by overflow is all the ones I don't use for my business. So I get my flavor oils from naturesgarden.com and bulkapothecary.com. I get my fragrance oils from the same places. And I've also tried Wholesale Supplies Plus's fragrance oils, and I like those. My favorite essential oil brand is Now. And if we take a look over here at these other two shelves, this is where I keep all of my ingredients for my business. 
These are all the essential oils I use for my business. And then all the mica powders I will use for my business. And then my little section of fragrances and flavor oils for my business. Oh, I also like Make Your Own Dot Fuzz's flavor oils and fragrances. And then here are just some ingredients I use for my business. Niacinamide, Allantoin, High Molecular Weight Hyaluronic Acid, Xanthan Gum Soft, and Scylla Gel. And then down here I got some Willow Bark Extract, Hydrolyzed Wheat Protein, a Random Glove, more Rice Protein, Lewisidal SF Complete. And then one more in the corner there I, I missed. Was that Cucumber or Chamomile? I don't know. And then Rita Mulse SCG, Settle Alcohol. I got Coenzyme Q10 in liquid form, some papaya oil, some watermelon seed oil, Caprolic Capric Triglyceride, and Rosehip Seed Oil. Then down here, I got some cocoa glucoside, and then some oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, and apricot kernel oil. And I get my oils from soperschoice.com. And then I got some foaming apple, some glycerin, rose hydrosol, lavender hydrosol, and witch hazel hydrosol. Then over here, I got some clays. We got bentonite clay, some rose clay, kaolin clay. And then over here is some cocoa powder and then matcha powder. And then these two jars just have clay mask in them. They're irrelevant. They're not ingredients. They're a made product. And then shea butter, sugar, and activated charcoal powder. Oh, and then up here I got some more powders that I use in clay masks. Turmeric powder, chamomile powder. This is rosehip powder. And then aloe vera powder. This is different than like the 100 times or 200 times powder. And then these are the containers I want to move all these powders in. I'll do that at some point. And then up here, I got some sodium phytate, Uxol PE9010, and then Uxol K903. And over here, I got aloe vera powder 200 times, glycolic acid, lactic acid, and propendiol. And yeah. Now back over to the other shelves with all the overflow coloring. These are just a lot of the sample micas I've had and tried that I'll use periodically. And then these are just some more mica powders I have that I don't use for my business. All right, now moving on to the other shelf. We're going to start on the top. And this is just a compilation of random ingredients, silicones, humectants, some solubilizers, some emollients, and some hydrosols. So let's take a look. Let's start with the silicones. I got cyclomethicone. I don't use this too often. Dimethicone and go-to silicone. This is a silicone alternative. Now we're moving on to all my humectants. Sodium lactate liquid, sodium PCA, propylene glycol, hyaluronic acid, high molecular weight, ultra low molecular weight, hyaluronic acid, glycerin, and now we're moving on to my solubilizers. Polysorbate 80, this is my favorite, sunflower solubilizer, and I don't know much about this one. <laughs> Alright, let's move on to the emollient esters. I got olive squalane. This is cocoa caprolate in the freaking label wore off. Same with this one. This is C1215 alkyl benzoate. IPM also lost its label. I don't know how to pronounce this. Caprolate capric triglyceride. Now moving on to the hydrosols. Cucumber hydrosol smells really good. Only need a small amount. Vanilla water smells amazing. Coconut water, no scent. Coconut milk, no scent. Blueberry fruit essence smells okay. Uh, grape essence, that smells alright too. Apple fruit essence, yum, smells amazing. Rose water, beautiful florally scent. Now moving down to the next shelf, I have it organized by gelling agents, fatting agents, thickeners, and then preservatives. So we're going to start with all of the gelling agents. Xanthan gum clear, I like xanthan gum soft more. Sucre gel, this makes Oils thicken jelly, sodium carbamer, cefamaxin, I love this stuff, gel maker powder, and tarragum. I've never used tarragum before, so I have no opinion. All right, moving on to my fatting agents. I have sucrose cocoate, haven't used it yet, but I have plans. Glycerol oleate, great to add into any surfactant system. 11300, haven't used it yet, but I have plans. And this ingredient here, I don't know how to say it, but I have plans for it. Haven't used it yet. All right, now moving on to my thickeners. This is a Crawfix, great for like shampoos, face washes, body washes. Gara Cat, it adds like a conditioning effect to your products. Polyamide 3, kind of hard to work with. Peg 150 to stearate, it's okay, but there's better options. And sodium stearate, I definitely need to formulate with it more. All right, let's go check out all the preservatives. I've got GeoGuard ECT. I haven't really worked with it much, but it is EcoCert. 
Yuxil K 903 EcoCert. It's one of my new faves. Optifin. This is oil soluble. It's about to expire. Tri-State Eco. It's EcoCert. I like it, but I feel like there's better options. Liquid Dermal Plus. This is perfect for beginners. Phenoxy Ethanol SA is lip safe. Optifin ND. Recently got it and I am enjoying it. Yuxil PE 9010. I like it. Neo Defend. Haven't worked with it in a long time. And then Vitamin E. This is an antioxidant, not a preservative, but I like to add it to my anhydrous products. All right, now moving on to the next shelf, we got some butters, some natural oils, and then some lip care ingredients. So first we're gonna take a look at the butters. I got some cocoa butter, and then I also got some cocoa butter back here. And also I, I wanna mention something about this cocoa butter. This is not real cocoa butter. It's soft and cocoa butter is supposed to be the hardest butter out there but i ordered it off of amazon and just anytime you order any ingredients always order them from reputable ingredient suppliers and then i also got some mango butter and then back here i got some shea butter i purchased that from make your own dot buzz and i also have more shea butter from make your own dot buzz that i use for my business oh and oh my gosh this has to be my favorite this is coffee butter from wholesale supplies plus and it smells so good and then linoleum butter I haven't used it yet, but it's amazing for your lips. Now moving on to the natural oils. I got some blueberry seed oil, raspberry seed oil, evening primrose oil, very small amount of castor oil. I need to get more. Very small amount of macadamia nut oil, jojoba oil, and then oat oil. I didn't even know this existed until I did my sponsorship with Brambleberry. Now moving on to the ingredients for lips. We have some volley lip. This is a lip plumper. Hoaba gel, it's basically the same thing as the TKB gloss base. Natural wax jelly, Laurel Laurites. And then down here are just a bunch of shades and pigments for lip glosses or whatever. I have a bunch of colors from TKB. I also have some shades from makingcosmetics.com. This violet number two, if you add this to a shampoo, it'll make it a purple shampoo. Fun fact. But yeah, that's just a bunch of shades and colors. So moving down to the next shelf full of a bunch of random ingredients. We have Visa Bowl. This is soothing and I absolutely love this ingredient. And I also don't know how to pronounce it. Menthol crystals, love it. Colloid oatmeal, love it. This is for deodorants. I bought this for deodorants. Uh, foaming bath whip base. I just wanted to test it out to compare it to the ones I make. And then coffee grounds. Now moving on to all the waxes. We have Cerebellina. We have Laurel Wax. We have Sunflower Wax. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Uh, Candel Lila Wax and then Beeswax. Now moving down to another random shelf. This is like really random. Um, we got baking soda. We got cream of tartar. And then in here we got some more baking soda and some arrowroot powder and just some random gallon sized baggies. Very classy. Tapioca starch. And then over here we got some exfoliants. I got some blueberry seeds. They don't sell this anymore. I don't know if they sell the red raspberry seeds anymore either. Pretty sure they have the cranberry seeds. Walnut shell powder. And then over here, we got some salts. This is really just random. I got like Celtic sea salt, red Hawaiian salt, black lava salt. I bought these so long ago. Pink Himalayan salt. And I've kind of just kept them. Dead sea salt and Epsom salts. And I like put them in baths sometimes, you know? And then over here, I got some clays. These are just clays I don't really use. I got some rose clay, sea clay. Rahasul clay, I think that's how you say it. French green clay, um, kelp powder, and then Moroccan clay. But yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this entire tour of all my ingredients. I hope I did a decent job. There was a lot of ingredients. I honestly did not think this video would take this long to record and to edit and to do the voiceover. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, so I want to start a new thing. I don't know if I'll remember to do it in future videos, but you should comment down below, um, Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty in the comment section so I know you made it to the end of this video. Okay, thanks, bye!